know your name, I know you great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Control my life, so I put my trust in you. You control my life, I put my trust in you. I know your name, I know your grain. Bad vibes can't even come my way. I'm just trying to serve, God, bring that place. Back in the days, couldn't find my way. But I know you got me. Ain't no love like you and me. So I was blind, but now I see. Why got all this face on me? Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning. Psalm 133 says this, Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down on the beard on the, on the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Haran, Haran, which falls on the mountain of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Amen. My simple hope and prayer for us this morning is that we will be a unified church. As we sing songs to the Lord, I pray that we will be unified. As we hear God's word preached to us by our brother Dapo, I pray there will be unity in hearing and unity in agreement. And as we fellowship with one another, I pray that there will be unity. I think one of the things I've seen in the life of the church and the number one thing that the enemy goes after is the unity. Uh, making sure we are uh, disunified. But I pray that this morning there will be unity in everything that we do. Amen? Amen. So let me pray for us this morning. And I just want us just to close our eyes and just have a, a time of reflection over our week. I love doing this every, every Sunday, allowing us to just pause and to think about the week that we have had, um, the blessings that the Lord has blessed us and Maybe the challenges that we've had this week. Maybe this week you haven't really had an opportunity to stop and to give thanks to God for who he is. Or you haven't had time to marvel at his wonderful works. I pray that this morning we can be still and know that he is the Lord. We can be still and recognize his goodness. Even for those who are going through a challenging time right now. So let's pause and reflect on God's goodness. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this new day you've given us. We thank you, Lord, that everyone here and for those who are on their way to church, Lord, you have given us the opportunity to wake up again and to breathe the breath of life again. What a privilege. And Heavenly Father, I just pray, Lord, with the breath that we have and the energy that we have and the strength that we have, maybe a lot of strength, maybe a little strength, Lord, we would give that time to worship you and give you the praise and glory that only you deserve, Lord. So God, I just pray that you will be in this service. You will unify us. You will be evident here. I pray, Lord, that only you alone will be given the thanks and the praise and glory that only you deserve. Help those of us this morning who are tired, who are weary, who are, have some deep burdens in our lives, Lord. Help us to cast our cares to you now, Lord. Help us to worship freely, Lord. Whatever is stopping us from giving you the praise and glory that you deserve, Lord, I just pray you will free us now, Lord. I pray there will be no distractions, Lord, we will not look to the left or to the right, Lord, but we will gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. So, God, I ask a simple prayer that you have your way in this service. In your name, amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if you're able to stand with me, let's stand as uh, Stephen and the team lead us in a time of sang worship. Thank you. <laughs>
What are you turning to wine? Open the eyes of the blind If there's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you So our God is greater Our God is greater Our God is stronger God you are higher than any other Our God is healer So awesome in power Our God Our God There's no one like you, no like, no like you. Into the darkness to shine, and out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you, no like, like you. Sing, our God is greater, our God is greater. Our God is stronger, God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, sing our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are other. Our God is healer, so awesome in power. Our God. And if our God is for us, who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, what could stand against? And if our God is for us, who can ever stop us? And if our God is with us, what could stand against? Said, what could stand against? Again. Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, and our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are any other, our God is healer, awesome in So the word says, I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness none can fathom. Amen. So Lord, we just want to praise you today. Be in our midst right now as we just exalt you and lift you up, O oh God. Come and have your way and be glorified in our midst. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Exalted, the King is exalted on high. Praise Him, He is exalted, forever exalted in life. We'll praise His name, for He is the Lord, forever His truth shall reign. Yeah. in his holy name. He is exalted. The king is exalted on high. Sing, he is, he is exalted. 
exalted, the King is exalted, oh. and I will praise, I will praise Him. He is exalted, forever exalted, and I will praise His name. For He is the Lord, forever His truth shall reign. in his holy name. He is exalted. The King is exalted on high. He's exalted on high. He is the Lord. Forever his truth shall reign. Heaven, heaven and earth. They rejoice in his holy name. He is exalted. The King is Exalted on high. Just our voices now from the top. He is exalted. The King is exalted. Oh, let him hear your voice right now. We will praise Him. He is exalted forever. Exalted on high. I will praise His name. For He is the Lord. He is the Forever. All of the heavens and earth. They rejoice in his own. He is exalted. The king is exalted on high. He is the Lord. He is the Lord. Forever his truth shall reign. All of heaven and earth, they rejoice in his holiness. He is exalted, the king is exalted on high. He is exalted, he is exalted, the king is exalted on high. One last time, he is exalted. Said he is exalted, the king is exalted on high. Continue our praise as we bow down and worship Him. Jesus is the King of 
Worship you, worship you, Lord. We worship you, consuming, consuming fire, sweet perfume. Your I don't think you understand how much of a privilege it is to be able to be together and uh, freely meeting, hugging, and fellowshipping with one another because we know there are many Christians around the world who don't have this opportunity. So don't take this time for granted. I know every time we uh, say go and greet each other, some people have a, a little frown on their face, but this is a privilege that we come together as God's family um, and we show our loves to one another. So this is fantastic. So we're going to continue our service, and I just want to ask, if your birthday is in the month of August, could you please stand up? Ooh. One, two, three. You're not standing. <laughs> August. Oh, wow. Quite a few Augusts. Oh, wow. Awesome. Awesome. Andrew as well. Anyone else? Have you forgotten your birthday? No? No? Awesome. So if we're going to sing our lovely 
happy birthday song. Um, so the count of three, we're going to sing together. One, two, three. fantastic and so still still be still be still stand up still stand up we're gonna pray for you if you're around um, our August birthdays just place your hand on them we're just gonna pray for God's blessing on their lives Heavenly Father we, I just thank you for my brothers and sisters here who are, will be celebrating their birthday in this awesome month of August it's not as great as the month of June but it's a it's a good time and Heavenly Father, I just ask for just your blessing to be upon them. I just pray, Lord, that as they reach another year in their, in their life, Lord, God, that they'll have a deeper knowledge of who you are, Lord. That's all we want. And that's what we want to see as a church for our brothers and sisters, Lord. Just a, a deeper understanding, a deeper love, a deeper joy for you, Jesus. So give them that, Lord, this, this month, Lord. And bless them, and keep them, and cover them with your blood. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Awesome. I just got a few quick notices. August is quite a quiet month, uh, so we don't have a lot going on. Um, so for the month of August, um, men's Bible study, um, Friday evening prayer meeting, um, the Discovery Jesus course, and the Croydon Refugee Day Center will be taking a little break for the month of um, August. And I believe for RDC, we'll be back on the 5th of September and there'll be more information about the other um, church activities in due course. So no um, men's Bible study, no Friday evening prayer meeting, but please still pray. It doesn't mean that God stopped listening to prayers in August. Keep praying for the church. Keep praying for the leadership. Keep praying for our world. Um, and the Discovery Jesus course will, not, um, will be taking a break for August. But door-to-door -door knocking will continue because the gospel still needs to be preached. Um, so door-to-door -door knock, knock in every Friday at uh, 12 o'clock. We'll still be meeting here um, at the church to do our evangelism. I think there was a sisterhood picture, but I don't think it's there. But apparently, I wasn't there, but apparently um, the sisters in our church had an amazing time at sisterhood. What chapter were you looking at? Let's see if they were listening. Esther. Esther 10, yeah. Esther chapter 2, Esther chapter 2. And who is Esther? A queen? Became queen? Okay, cool. Okay, I guess there was a bit of listening going on. Awesome. So I heard they had a fantastic time, and I want to encourage and commend um, that ministry. I think that's it for the notices. So I'm going to ask the youth to go to your classes. I'm, where's Anik? I'm trying to find Anik. Is that right? No, you're staying in. So the youth are staying in, actually. And also the children are staying in. And if your children get a bit irritated um, or they get bored of um, that post sermon, um, feel free, on, on my right here, there's a few coloring um, books that they can use. Feel free to use that um, anytime. It's just across here. You won't be disturbing if you're walking across. Don't feel embarrassed. But um, your child can play um, coloring stuff on my right here. And I said child, so don't, I don't want to see any adults going and do some, some coloring. Coloring in. Uh, I don't know, yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So I'm going to invite my brother Adapo to come and share God's word with us. We, we're, we're doing a short little series called Summer in the Psalms. I'm not sure if we have the poster, um, Summer in the Psalms. And so we're taking a break from the book of Acts, and we just want to encourage you um, looking at the book of Psalms. So we're picking um, our favorite psalms to preach on. Uh, and again, Dapo stole my favorite psalm. He stole Psalm 23, so he's going to be preaching on that. And next week, I'll be preaching on Psalm 139. And I heard that's a, that's a really, really good psalm. And I think Rory will be preaching later on on Psalm 22. And so I'm going to encourage you um, in the book of Psalms. So I hope that you have a blessed time in this new series. Thank you. Um, good morning uh, once again. And um, as I always say, it is a privilege um, to stand before the people of God to speak 
uh, on the Word of God. Um, it's, it's a privilege that continues to challenge me, uh, for which I will continue to seek God's mercy. And I'm going to call Mukombo in a minute to come up here and read Psalm 23. Um, but in the things that I want to say today, um, can I just say that it's not... I'm, 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 in saying that, I'm not suggesting in any way that I have attained the perfection or the level or whatever it is. I am just like you, one that is striving day by day to be a committed follower of Jesus Christ. And it is just something that we want to all work together um, and, uh, and, and, uh, and achieve. So Mukumbo, if you want to come up and as you do that, we will pray. Lord, we thank you very much for this time. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for a new day. Thank you for the opportunity to gather um, as your sons and daughters to hear your word. The gathering of the saints uh, evokes and releases your power. And we pray, Lord, for the sake of your son, for the sake of Jesus Christ, that the feeble words that will come out of me this day, that you will use them to challenge us, to renew our consecration, to grant us a sight of our crucified and our risen Savior. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. Mukombo. <clears throat> Sorry. I'm reading from Psalm 23, NIV. The Lord is my shepherd, I like nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley, through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your road and staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's the word of the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, so we do start our series, our summer series uh, today, and um, the, the Psalms are an exciting collection of Holy Spirit-inspired writings. Um, they are wonderful in their breadth, they are wonderful in their depth, they're wonderful in their context. Um, now, there's 150 psalms uh, in the scriptures. Um, actually, about only 73 of them are attributed to David. Uh, 12 of them were written by a chap called Asaph, and two were actually written by King Solomon. Did you know that? One was written by Moses. Who knows which one? Here's a Bible quiz. Who knows? Sam? Do you agree with him? Uh, you're not sure, are you? Uh, it is indeed Psalm 90. One attributed to a chap called Ethan, and 12 to the sons of Korah. Uh, these were a family of Levitical singers who had duties in the temple. Um, so it's quite a broad range of, of writers inspired by the Holy Spirit um, into the Psalms. Some Psalms celebrate the creation, the creation um, and the creative activity of God. Some Psalms record historical events. Some Psalms are gems of thanksgiving, of praise to our wonderful God. Uh, some Psalms are prayers of repentance, prayers seeking deliverance, prayers for protection. Uh, some psalms are a cry for deliverance. Some are a testament of God's faithfulness, God's salvation, uh, God's provision, the majesty of God. And of course, the longest psalm, the longest chapter in the Bible. Who knows that? What's the verse? 119 that focuses on the integrity of the Word of God, the faithfulness of the Word of God, the assuredness of the Word of God, the, the intimacy 
of the Word of God. The Psalms are indeed a wonderful collection. But even more excitingly, the Psalms contain a large body of messianic prophecy. Now, what does that mean? It's about Jesus. It's about his sufferings, about his death. He's, he's, he's about proclaiming Christ as king, pro proclaiming his second coming. Psalm 110, for instance, is probably the psalm that displays Christ as the Son of God. David says in there, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand. The Psalms are really all about Jesus Christ. So that was the first thing I wanted to focus your minds on. Um, and perhaps one of the things that you could do um, is, is to, over the next 150 days or so, is to try and read a chapter of the Psalms every day. I did try to do that a few years ago. I got stuck somewhere around 70-something. I never quite completed it. Um, so I, perhaps I will um, give myself that challenge first. So listen, today we're going to start off by looking at Psalm 23. Now most of us can recite that psalm from our memories. And therein lies the danger, the danger of familiarity. The danger of what? Familiarity. That we get used to a psalm and actually forget to take time uh, to rest, take time to meditate, take time to dwell into what God is trying to say to us in the psalms. Now, the Bible tells us that the word of God is alive, is living. Now, what that means is that it grows. So you might have read the Psalms, you might have read Psalm 23 20 years ago, but if you read it again today, God is very able to bring out new things from his word for your life. So in reading a scripture, it's so important that one never gets into that trap of familiarity so that we open our hearts and are able to always gain, always glean something new from the word of God. So we do tend to take familiar things for granted in this pretty much in the same way as relationships that we are familiar with. We tend to take those relationships for granted. So it's very, very important that we are intentional and uh, to intimate ourselves regularly with Psalm 23 so that we don't get caught in the stillness of familiarity. So let's start to look at it. Um, one of the interesting things I discovered as I studied this is actually Psalm 23 is almost like um, the second installment in a trilogy of Psalms. If you actually follow the theme, it starts off, the story almost starts off in Psalm 22, goes on to Psalm 23, and actually kind of ends in Psalm 24 um, with, the, with Psalm 22 talking about the suffering of Christ, right? And in Psalm 23, then talking about Christ as a saving Christ, a saving Messiah, with Psalm 24 then talking about the glorified Christ. Uh, we see in Psalm 24, it says, Lift up your heads, all ye gates. The King of glory is coming in. So you see actually that theme across the three Psalms. Uh, and Psalm 23 is an interesting one which we'll settle on. Um, which is a psalm of David. Uh, it is a psalm of David. And in writing that psalm, David draws heavily from his time keeping the sheep of his father David. Uh, so you'll see from what's on the screen, you see some key things. So David understood exactly what it meant. So in this um, excerpt from 1 Samuel, David talks about says, your, your servant when he was talking to Saul. He said, your servant used to keep the sheep his father's sheep. And he talks about the fact that when a lion came uh, and a bear came and picked up a lamb, one lamb out of the whole flock, what does David do? He went after it. Right? He went after it and he fought with that lamb or lion. He killed it and he rescued the lamb from the mouth of the lion, from the mouth of the bear. So David was actually quite familiar with all the responsibilities, all the attributes of 
being a shepherd and which guided his writing here. So listen, let's study this verse, verse by verse, and in doing so, we'll borrow quite a lot of text from John chapter 10 as well in order to be able to solidify our understanding. So verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, if the Lord is my shepherd, what does that make me? What does that make you? Sheep. Yeah? Are we agreed? Anybody disagree with that? Yeah? What does that make us? Sheep. So let's start off in this study by looking from the perspective of what it means to be sheep. Yeah? So let's flick across to John chapter 1. John, sorry, John chapter 10. Um, in order to begin to look at what it means about sheep. So in John chapter 1, Jesus says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door. So the first thing you glean from there is, where does a shepherd keep his sheep? In the sheepfold. Are we agreed on that? Yeah? In the sheepfold. Now, a sheepfold denotes boundaries. Are you with me? A sheepfold denotes what? Boundaries. Not walls. Boundaries. So from what you see on the screen, you could have sheepfolds that are actually out in the open or sheepfolds that are in the ranch. They denote what? Boundaries. Right? And what you see from sheep is a voluntary surrender, a voluntariness to be hemmed in by the boundaries set by the Lord. A voluntariness to be hemmed in by the boundaries of the Lord. It's a voluntary surrender to the boundaries that Christ has put around our lives. Are you with me? It's a voluntary surrender to his word, a voluntary surrender to his will, and a voluntary surrender to his way. Sheep are surrendered to the authority of their shepherd. Sheep are surrendered to the direction and the instruction of their shepherd. In the same way that we must be people who are surrendered to the authority, to the leadership, and to the ownership of Christ over our lives. Sheep have resolved probably the most important question that any human being will have to face in their lives. And the question is this. Unto whom and under whose authority have I surrendered my life? That's the first question that everyone must address in their lives as they seek to follow Jesus. Unto whom and under whose authority have I decided to surrender my life? And so when you look at sheep who are settled in the sheepfold, in the sheep pen of a shepherd, it is because they have decided to surrender and to settle there. So that question must be one that we answer for our lives. Are we people who understand what it means to surrender the ownership of our lives to God and to Christ? Or do we want to be people who retain ownership of our lives and do what we want? Are we completely and totally yielded to Christ as sheep in his shepherd? Or are we just part-time sheep 
that do what we want when we want and come to Jesus when it is convenient for us. Voluntary surrender is one of the conditions of discipleship. So in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28, 29, Jesus says, come to me and I'll give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you. So it's an invitation for us to put our necks in his yoke. It's an invitation for us to follow him, tied to him. It's an invitation for us to be bound to him. It is not a bond of slavery. It is not a bond of fear. It is not a bond of subjugation. Nevertheless, what is it? It is still a yoke. The person who wants to truly follow Christ must be bound to Christ, such that if Christ turns left, where do you turn? You cannot go straight. If you go straight in the yoke, what will happen? You will damage your neck. And that's what happens to a lot of people who choose or who want to do their thing their own way rather than follow Jesus Christ. So when we choose to follow Christ, we must choose to follow him for who he is and not for what things he can give us. We must choose to follow him rather than the physical stuff that he gives. It must be our love for him that should keep us near the cross. It must be our love for him that should keep us within his shipfold. This matter of being bound to Christ is a very important matter, so I'm going to spend a few more minutes on it. Twice in the book of Ephesians, in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, Paul describes himself, Paul refers to himself as a prisoner of Christ. He says, as a prisoner of Christ, as a prisoner of Christ. I mean, he wasn't uh, within walls, but he still saw himself as a prisoner in a prison without walls, a voluntary prisoner of Jesus Christ. But we do see from the scriptures, and particularly in John chapter 6, that there are some disciples who choose to walk away from the sheepfold. In John chapter 6, Jesus gave them some really tough teaching. And some disciple says, my goodness, this is way too hard. I've had enough of this. I'm going my way. And they stopped following him. They rejected him and they walked away. These were sheep who decided no longer to be bound to him. Sheep who decided no longer to operate within his boundaries. Sheep who decided to exit the sheepfold of their own volition. But Paul recognized that he was bound to Christ in a bond of love. But most importantly, and I'll say this a number of times, Paul recognized that you and I can only be a servant of the Lord when we have been prisoners of the Lord. It is not possible to be a servant of the Lord unless you are a prisoner of the Lord. Um, as one Bible teacher put it, you can only be a captain for the Lord if you have been a captive of the Lord. You cannot be a captain of the Lord unless you are a captive of the Lord. Unless you are tied to him, unless you are surrendered to him, you cannot be a captain for the Lord. So I labor to bring this matter of the sheep that is rested in the authority, the sheep that is rested in the provision, the sheep that is rested in the confines that Jesus has provided. Time is flying away. 
Let's go to the next point we see because we're talking about our posture of sheep, as sheep. In John chapter 10, verse 4, Jesus brings out a very important thing. He says, The sheep follow me, for they know my voice. The sheep follow me, for they know my voice. The voice of Christ. The voice of Christ. Following Jesus only happens after knowledge of his voice. And so this is a second question that I want to bring out to each one of us today. Do we know his voice? Do we know the voice of Christ? Jesus calls us to rather basic things. His first call, the first call of his voice is a call unto salvation. The next call of his voice is a call unto discipleship and following. And then there is a call unto endurance to the end. Without a knowledge of his voice, there could be no heeding of that call. There can be no hearing of that call. And accordingly, there will be no obedience, there will be no salvation, there will be no discipleship. Do you and I know his voice? Do we really, really know his voice? Let me point out something that also comes out in this John chapter 10. Jesus brings out two very, very interesting points. In John chapter 10, verse 16, Jesus talks about sheep that are not in his fold that he must bring in. Yeah? John chapter 10, verse 16 says, And all the sheep which are not of this fold, them I must bring in. And they will what? They will hear my voice. So Jesus talks about sheep not in his fold that he must bring in, for they will hear his voice. But further down in verses 24 to 26, when Jesus was speaking to the Jews, Jesus makes reference to them that he has spoken to them, but they did not believe him. So these are people who have not what? They've not heard his voice. They have not known his voice, and they've not accepted him, nor believed him. And Jesus says to them very clearly, they are not of his sheep. And herein lies the danger for us who come to church day by day, week by week, sorry, um, in hearing, but are we actually taking in what Christ is saying to us? Are we believing in what he is saying? Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. He's calling us to committed following, committed discipleship. Not as fans, but completely committed followers. Not half-hearted followers, but completely committed followers. Not fans who are interested in living our best life now, but people who are totally committed to follow him for loving him. We're still in verse 1 of Psalm 23, by the way. Um, Let's look at this other point that we see in terms of our posture as sheep. How many of you remember the parable of the lost son? Do you remember the two other parables that come with that? The parable of the lost coin and the parable of the lost... And what does a shepherd do in that case? When one sheep is lost, what does he do? He leaves the 99 and he goes in search of that one, right? Doesn't that reflect what David did in that passage that we did when he said when a lion took a sheep, he went after it in order to get it back. 
Now the point I want to, the quick point I want to make out of this is everyone matters in the kingdom of God. Everyone matters. You matter. I matter. When we do get lost, and we will get lost from time to time, let's be assured, let's be assured that he'll come looking after us. It's then a decision on whether we want him to rescue us or not, because there are some people who don't want to be rescued. It's then the choice that has, has to be made. Because we live in community, we also have to be mindful that one sheep's action affects the others. Because he leaves the 99 and goes after the one, you could ask the question, are the 99 then exposed to danger? But the issue here is we trust the Lord. We know what he's done. We know what he's capable of doing. And to the extent that he goes after the one who is lost, he's showing his dedication to see us through to the end. He places us on his shoulders. Rather than condemning us, he provides the basis for restoration, and we are grateful for that. Let me leave this point on the sheep with one final point, please. We must never, ever forget the attributes of God. One of the attributes of God is what? He is sovereign. What does that mean? He decides what he wants to do, when he wants to do it, how he wants to do it, and no one can question him. God is always right. He alone does, and he alone has the authority to do as he pleases. And so in Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, God says that I send you out as sheep amongst wolves. And as we are beginning to see from the study of the Acts of Apostles that we're doing, those who follow Christ will suffer loss. They will suffer loss of health, loss of things, loss of life, loss of well-being. And believers do suffer loss. Believers do suffer great loss in the service of the Lord. Believers do lose their lives in the service of the Lord. But you know, even in those circumstances, that does not change the fact that he is the good shepherd. That does not change the fact that he is the good shepherd. That does not mean that he has relinquished his authority and his desire over us. It's just that his sovereignty prevails at all times. Now, I promise now, um, I've finished with this piece about the sheep. But why have I labored so much about this? Why have I spent so much time looking at this from the perspective of the sheep? The simple reason of it is that if we do not understand that we have to be sheep in his sheepfold, if we do not understand that we have to be sheep under his authority, then to be honest with you, the rest of the psalm means nothing to us. The rest of the psalm means nothing if we are not his sheep. So even from the very next part where he says, I shall not want, that only applies if we are sheep of the Lord. If you go to the rest of the verses, that only applies if we are sheep before the Lord. And so that is why I have spent quite some time in dealing with this. So let me quickly go on because of time. I shall not want. We see that in the second verse of verse one, the second part of verse one. These are four challenging words. I shall not want. Other versions say I lack nothing or I have all I want. Um, but herein lies the 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 uh, the paradox, in the sense that across the world there are many God fearing, many many Bible believing people who actually do not have their basic needs of shelter or protection or well-being, is it that this scripture doesn't apply to them? No, no, no. It's because we have to understand exactly what it means when it says, I shall not want. 
Now, what exactly is the basic want? What exactly is the basic thing that a man needs? You see, the basic lack of a man is the absence of the life of Christ in him. So before a man comes to know Christ, he is filled with his sinful nature without the life of Christ. So his first need is salvation. His first need is to be infused with the life of Christ, to be born again, to be raised into a newness of life, as Romans chapter 6 tells us. And even once he comes to that place of salvation, there is a need to grow in the life of Christ for the, life, for the rest of his life. And that is why Christ must be our sufficiency. Christ must be all that we need, all that we want, all that we desire for life. We must have a valuation system that values Christ as all that we need. And therein we will be, say, we will be able to say, I shall not want. Let me skip very quickly to verse 2 says, he makes me to lie beside green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. A pasture is a place of provision where a shepherd leads his flock for nourishment. In Psalm 100 verse 3, the Bible says that we, you and I, we are the sheep of his pasture. There's a subtle issue there. The sheep of what? His pasture. It says his pasture. So he decides the menu. He decides what's on offer. He decides what's best for the sheep. So it's not a buffet where we can go and get what we want or think we can get what we want. It is whatever he gives us that we must take. It's where he provides everything for life and for godliness. It's his place of rest. It's his place of nourishment. But herein lies a challenge, because as sheep, we must understand that <laughs> there are indeed many pastures out there, many false doctrines. And that's why it's so important about his pasture, his pasture. So where do we feed off? We make sure we feed off the robustness of the teaching of the gospel of Christ and him crucified. There are many, many, many doctrines out there. Doctrines that teach about your best life now. Doctrines that teach and treat Jesus Christ as a cash machine. No. His pasture. So let's be people who are focused on his place of nourishment, his place of provision for life and for godliness. We then go to the second part of the verse that says, he leads me beside still waters. And there again, we see this matter of a voluntary surrender, that willingness to be led. Part of the challenge for us as Christians is that rather than allow Jesus to lead us to the place where he wants to lead us, we want to lead Jesus to where we want to go. And therein lies the challenge that we face. We seem to think that we know it all. We seem to think that the little knowledge that we had is sufficient for us to drive ourselves and to lead ourselves in the way that we should go. But we see here, he leads me beside still waters. Still waters. In Ephesians chapter 5, the Bible makes a parallel of the scriptures and water. So it talks about the washing with water as with the word. So when it talks about still waters, it's actually talking about waters that are so still that you can see your reflection in it. Yeah? So it's being able to look into the scriptures and see the need of your life for salvation and for growth. 
It's being able to see the scriptures as the search light of God that points to our behaviors, our attitudes, uh, for which there must be continuous repentance, for which there must be a continuous examination of ourselves so that we can grow into his image. In pulling together this verse 2, um, being led beside green pastures, being led to still waters. I couldn't help but go back to that verse in Matthew where it says, Come unto me, all ye who labor, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and you will find rest. It's an invitation to rest, an invitation to a rest that only God can provide. A voluntary submission to his yoke. Listen, I'm going to stop there. I've failed uh, Reverend Denzel in that I promised to actually talk through this entire psalm, but I think about 35 minutes have gone, but I've only been able to deal with two verses. I pray that God will help us all to go into the rest of the of the, of the verses and to learn from that. It's all about Christ. It's about following him. It's about being sheep in his pasture. Let me leave you with the two questions that came up earlier as we looked at these two verses. Unto whom have we and under whose authority have we surrendered our lives? Let me leave you with that first question to go away and think about. Are you a committed follower? Or are you just a fan that celebrates when things are good? And secondarily, do I know his voice? Because his sheep know his voice and they will follow him. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your word that cannot be broken. We thank you for your word that is pure. Thank you for your word that is the sword of the Spirit that's like a fire. And as we have spent just a few moments looking at the inspired, the Holy Spirit inspired words of David, of our Savior Jesus Christ, we appeal to you for grace. We appeal to your throne for mercy because this, O oh God, is our time, our day, our hour, our moment of need that you grant unto us that grace to surrender wholeheartedly, wholly unto you, to surrender unto the authority of life that you give us, the authority over our lives. We appeal to you, Lord, that you will make us men and women who are voluntarily surrendered, voluntarily given you ownership of our lives, people who feed on your pasture, people who are challenged, who are encouraged by the Holy Scriptures. Thank you, Father God, for our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for his life. Thank you for his death. Thank you for his sacrifice, his victory on the cross of Calvary. Thank you, Father God, for he is the good shepherd. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Dapo, for bringing us that powerful word. I mean, I've heard Psalm 23 preached many times before, but I haven't heard it given so much detail looking at um, our responsibility as the sheep. Uh, and my prayer is that we will be good sheep, uh, listening to the good shepherd, because he has good plans for us. Amen? Amen. So we're going to sing our last song, um, our last sang song together. And during this time, we're going to take up our offerings too. Thank you.
Computers of the glory and the honor, Lord. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor, Lord. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. For you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, there is no one else like you, for you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You deserve the glory and the honor. We lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. Yes, you deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you, for you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else, for you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. For you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, there is no one else like you. Not just our voices, you are great. For you are great, you do miracles so there is no one else like you. There is no one else like for you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is one else like. Amen, amen, amen. Can you give a louder round of applause for the Lord? Amen. Amen. He, he really is great, and I pray that you will know that this week. I thank you all for coming and worshiping together. Thank you to Stephen and the team for leading us so beautifully this morning. Uh, thank you for Frederick, Patricia, and Swaley for, for leading us on the tech as well. God bless you, and for everyone else who had a part to play in, in making this service uh, possible. Uh, and I just want to ask, if you're here for the very first time, um, we just want to give you a little gift. So can you just wave at me if you're here for the very first time? We just want to welcome you. Someone there, I can't see you. You're sitting. Good to see you, sister. God bless you. Good to, see, good to see you. Anyone else here for the very first time? Good to see you as well, brother. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I hope you felt welcomed here this morning. Thank you so much, Dapo, for bringing us uh, God's word. And, and I would encourage you, um, as Dapo already read, um, said, uh, please do read the whole of Psalm 
uh, 23. But if you do have time, uh, maybe read the, the whole of the Psalms, who, who knows, uh, or have 150 days to, to do that. Um, that would be great. So let's share the grace with one another. Feel free to look at your neighbor and, and share the grace with them. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and love of God, and a fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Please feel free to have tea and coffee, and let's continue to fellowship with one another. Thank you. Lord bless you. shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn